not message me on top there. Webinar is, is, is now streaming, is it? You can release your, oh, it's gone, it's gone. Okay. Do you? I'm so far to wrote the letter for the Irish Green Lawyer in the Heron, taking the mic, a fellow literary, your her curfew not, the high star eka, eha filiata, Bucalara, August Green, Emerla, August in Loga. In end of the Claron T on Philip Paddy Bush, big on Philip Afric Mac A on, or A specialta, come out le, Nick Oskelta, la high screen nori, fill e, August Kiltori. Walter Rip Hawk. The Irish Writer Centre taking the mic is at the West Cork Literary, Fe Literary Festival for a fantastic evening of poetry and prose in English and Irish. I'm Betty Stenson, Stenson Program Officer at the Centre, and on behalf of myself and my colleagues, I'd like to wish you all a lovely evening. Thanks to my colleague Jess, who is here also this evening, looking after the tech side of things, and to Shauna, who is standing ready and waiting in case of emergency. Um, hosted by poet Paddy Bush, the evening will feature special guest Alfred McA, as well as an open mic with writers, poets, and musicians. The Irish Writers Centre is 30 years old this year and is the National Resource Centre for Irish Literature. <laughs> Our mission continues to be to support and promote writers at all stages of their development. We are proud of our latest initiative for writers, Osgoelga, and for those who want to write in Irish, with course bursaries for Irish language writers. First year recipients will receive course credit worth 165 euro towards a course at the Irish Writer Centre. We have Irish language writer in their residence programmes. We also have programmes for new courses, Osgeilge, with Clive Devlin facilitating a sold out course for writing a picture book, Osgeilge for Children, and Kieran EA facilitating a professional development course for writers who want to present their work in Irish. I'd like to hand you over now to Emer O'Herlihy, di director of the West Cork Literary Festival, who will tell you all about this year's festival. Thank you. Thanks, Betty. Uh, hello to all of you. It's so lovely to be here tonight. Um, a huge thanks to, to Betty and everybody in the Irish Writer, Writer Centre. We were delighted when they approached us about this event. Um, in a normal year, the West Cork Literary Festival will be taking place in the town of Bantry for one week every July. And in the normal course of events, we'd have an open mic there um, every evening during the festival where anybody who wants to can come along, whether it's um, somebody who's attending one of our writing workshops, whether it's somebody speaking in the festival or whether it's just somebody who just, who just wants to try something out. Um, so it's been lovely to find a way to try and bring a little bit of that, um, that opportunity online. So when the Irish Writer Centre approached us about this, we were delighted to get involved and even more so as it's a, a bilingual event um, and it's fabulous to have Paddy Bush and Afric Mackay involved here tonight um, as well as the 10 um, writers and musicians who are going to be uh, performing for us as well. Um, this year the West Cork Literary Festival is happening mainly online. We've been doing online events um, with Irish and international writers throughout the year and we have a full line full lineup of online events happening throughout July um, our next event is a book launch for Mello Doherty this Thursday and we have a book launch for Mary McGill on the 2nd of July and then something almost every day throughout July, um, many of which are already on our website westcourtmusic.ie forward slash LF programme but we'll be announcing um, new events kind of on an ongoing basis over the yeah. next week or two. We're also partnering with the Irish Writers Centre on their Young Writers um, Delegates programme where four young writers living on the island of Ireland are being selected to attend the virtual West Cork Literary Festival events and to work with mentor Ema Ryan. Um, so that will be happening during July as well. And we're also delighted to say that we will be having some outdoor events in Bantry um, between the 10th and 12th of July. And we'll be announcing those um, hopefully in, within the next week. Um, we're just kind of ironing out um, the logistics involved in putting on outdoor events and, and how that's going to work. But, it, but it's very exciting to think of writers actually coming down to Bantry um, and being able to meet with, with audiences, albeit from a two metre distance. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, so we're delighted that so many events are going ahead this year, including this event. So I'm now going to uh, just wish you all a fantastic evening and I'm going to hand you back to Betty who will introduce you to, to, um, to Paddy and Afric.
Um, there's some sort of delay with the sound. Does anyone else hear it? Or is it just me? No, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the sound. Okay, here. Okay, so maybe I'll just hear hear you twice. Okay, I'm going to talk over the sound I hear then, and I'm going to introduce you to Paddy Bush, our esteemed MC for the night. Uh, Roger Paddy Bush in my law clear. I was talking er in Abraham Igiri, Isila Agarhor, August Ashtrahor A. No he gila the gila kushkin, douche Michael Hartley 2006. I was no he on a turning wing, douche Irish Times Poetry now simply in 2017. Is it peripheral vision, Bolicon Berla, August second sight, Ra the quid Dante Gurga, Lena quid Ashtrahor Fane. It air in Fushaha, a devil of late twenty twenty, no lower is steady week. Is spoiled the Eastana A. Born in Dublin in nineteen forty eight, Paddy Bush lives in Kerry and is a poet, editor, and translator in both Irish and English. He has published thirteen collections of poetry and five books of translations into and from Irish. He edits the anthology Voices of the World at the World's Edge. Irish Poets on Skellig Michael, Daedalus 2010. He received the 2006 Michael Hart and Poetry Award and the 2017 Irish Times Poetry Now Award. His most recent books are Peripheral Vision, a collection in English and Second Sight, a selection of his poems in Irish with his own translations, which were published by Daedalus in 2020. He's a member of Ace Donna. Uh, a huge um, Irish Writer Centre welcome and a huge West Cork Literature Festival welcome, Paddy. Take it away. Gurumila Mahagut Betty, August Anna Sarmadansa. I'm a, a little outside my comfort zone at high tech events like this, but uh, I'm delighted to be hosting something uh, on behalf of the Irish Writer Centre and the West Cork Literary Festival because they're both uh, institutions to which I have personally uh, reason to be grateful. So it's uh, a uh, great pleasure for me uh, to do so, and I look forward to hearing the contributions tonight. Um, before I uh, introduce people, uh, I'm going to read a poem um, originally written in Irish, and then I will read the translation. But when I say originally written in Irish, it's my Irish translation of a poem written in medieval Irish. and. Some of you, I'm sure, uh, know it, very commonly known as the Song of Amergan. And I do it because I'm actually looking out my window here at the place where Amergan recited this famous uh, poem. And I think it's worth thinking that about the fact that while for many years the whole po story of the Leor Gawal and the Miletians was read primarily as a story of conquest and appropriation, and still that's a basic meaning of it, that I think it's very possible nowadays and useful to read particularly Amergan's poem, which he recited as he stepped onto the shoreline, which I'm looking at out my window now, having led his people from Galicia in northern Spain, uh, because we're told by Geoffrey Keating that there was famine after a uh, 26-year drought. So, you know, it's possible to see there was migrants and migrants who were uh, victims of climate change. Uh, I think it's a useful way of doing it. And Amergan's words can also, I think, be read as a sort of ecological manifesto. I'll read first my modern Irish version of the medieval Irish, which I call Cushkame Avergeen. May Gay Ermwear, May Town Dealan, May Glor Mara, May Dav Shacht Gorok, May Fjallar Er Eil, May Dior Drocht the Fing Rain, May Eilacht Fosh, May Turk Er Gail, May Brodan Selin, may Loch Erva, may see Agina, may Gafuivua Slee Sacha, 
me dia einen tinnes sich jaun. Ke jenen reg klohan schle, ke chahan solus er krohan in galli, ke o green kal lihig in jrien, ke a shorien a taunta reelta ha marvan amara, ke er a heilschien na taunta reelta ha shin, ke drown, Cain dia a chorin fair er lana anun eilsha. Garter an fille, fille na guicha. And then in English, Amergen steps ashore, puts his right fat on, foot on the land, and says, Am wind on sea, am waves swelling, am ocean's voice, am stag of seven clashes. I'm falcon on cliff, I'm sunlit dewdrop, I'm rarest of herbs, I'm boar enraged, I'm salmon in pool, I'm lake in plain, I'm learning's essence, I'm sharpened spear dealing death, I'm God who kindles fire in the head, who makes smooth the stony mountain, who elucidates the lives of the moon? Who proclaims where the sun will rest? Who leads the stars like cattle from the ocean? On whom do those stars smile? What troop, what god edges blades in a plague-struck fortress? Let a poet be invoked, a poet of wind. So, Shine, um, Kashkem Avergin, no Rusk Avergin, Agus Marshin de Gurimila Mahagav, Agus, er, Kunche Oz Armanish, Falte, a Hair Riv, Afric Mahay, Mar E. Specialta than Ehenacht, Agus, Pisale Horte, Elea doing, Maristina, Anahacht, a he Afric. Isail Filiat and Gailga Sail Filiat Nahern Agustashi Tachtach Marta Fitafoite Le Sail Nat Litriata Er Er Kuplishli and Day Job, her Day Job as uh, an editor with Ngoom. She's also uh, the Irish language editor of the Stinging Fly of Poetry Ireland Review and uh, of uh, Gorse. So, you know, she's uh, very important in a number of ways, but of course she's primarily important as a poet and that's why she's here tonight. So, Curran Fáilte, Bóroth, Afrik, Cúpla Pisa Elea Doing Ledahal. Um, thank you so much, Paddy. It's an honor to read with you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's a very good start. Um, I'd just like to thank Betty Stenson and the Irish Writers' Centre and the West Cork Literary Festival for having me. I'm going to read two old poems and then for my second five minute slot. I'd like to read some new work. I'm going to read the first poems in Irish and in English because I have translations, but the new poems, um, both Bavala Me the Lave and Ray Dio Vaughan. Martin, Achter Hunder, Hoshgale at Hain, Queen Gracken, Achter Hunder, Agus Evelyn Joyce, Fek Evelyn Erdus. Sitcha egan bunyog agasun throj of festu the quivni keen a hawig. The curra fachta kielu the far farig agasus she a thought it your ha horma. Evelyn ni hamoi. No be me sonata punchke lak a hoira. Nor na hain bogus in ina a honeyn shiri a tarrant on hnahe. On an scale that Evelyn is the Hunna, Lanon bought this Kurach on a Machta, Achavon Shot, Ganimian on Kokach. 
Shen Kahu the Hleche, a Haulu Kanasipi, Egahain, is a ban of Valta. Onor Gurher the Hunfarga, is Garemia the Low, the Nevog, Hlena, Granta. The Adventure of Kumna. Two stories that go to the heart. The Adventure of Kumna and Joyce's Evelyn. Take Evelyn first, she's seated at the window, decking the street out in memories of her youth. She has been invited to elope with a sailor and finds herself in two minds. Evelyn won't go. Let's not be naive about the story, though, especially since it's not filial duty that holds her back, but the tug of the familiar. Evelyn's tale is much like Cumna's a beloved, a boat, and a chance of escape. Except for this, that the young man gives in. It's hard to resist wondering how they fared, he and his curiosity woman, from the moment they raised anchor and took off in her polished glass boat. Connor speaks. It wasn't easy for me. From stern to prow and back again, I was unsteady on my feet. It wasn't a wooden board beneath me, but a pane of glass. It wasn't a woman with me, but a million mirrors around me. You think I was walking on water, and not with pleasure, but sheer force of nerves. She robbed me of three delights. A foot pressing over land, an unknown woman, the plains quiet. Laureen Kumla. Thompson Irabeska. O Hossach Gajerabaj Lum O Yara Gatosach. Bukharach er Mahoch was me. Ni clor I'm at the Vifum a clor hlinna. Ni bana vi farum ach milas goy em hlinna. Darlum garevan pishkehain a shulagum. Is near La Hahase, at La Chown, we witness. Three evenes a Hulshiurm, Lu er Hollow, Ban Gana Athna, Machra Follow. And want to finish with another poem because I know we have a, a long open mic session <laughs> ahead. Um, so I will lay him as I guess lay him and touch on the translation by David Wheatley. Gafal Syrinx. Crehen on Solus, er Hotterm and Lochen. Rehen on Hyala and Hercule Roch Hunger. Stop and Fad Spera, one abre Hyal. Ruffin a liner in Ach the ground. Felon on Tumlan, the Huron, the Locher. Kellen on Hushog, Tossach on Broche. Ligam Wemla Hypeshire picture shone a brinner, ni Kailen she the Aina, non e Hassan in a chine. On all no on e Squealen, a other floor, a chino. A lawher, a gavola, Kellower and she is Crehen. The taking of Syrinx. Light flickers on the face of the water and the moon flies its glamoury circle. A length of unmoored sky defies strong snares and the tree's weave is torn by lustre. The hole sets off the rushy edge, the narrow bounds where the river bank ends. Over time, I develop this picture of the girl. She yields to no man nor stands in his way. A woman won't breathe unless ready, between words. At the sight of ambush, she sways, transformed. Ramad, thank you for the, the first session done. Karamila Mahagat Afrik Agus is Bralam Agus is Kush Untisham Connus at Nianto, Tanga Kalikel Agus Connus Nianto, Shanishkelta. Er Shlita, Hoim Shra, Shanishkel, the Gaelga, Agus Gregish, or whatever, the, the essential unity of so much in language uh, between mythology and the contemporary and all, Gurmila Mahagat. Uh, 
William Falter Karinish uh, and to introduce uh, Frank Phelan. Frank is a Dublin born writer living and writing in County Kildare, a member of Worldly Worders Creative Collective. He's a contributing poet for Texas based Mads Swirl. He had a poem including, included in the Northern Ireland Mental Health Arts Festival and was commissioned by the Community Radio Forum of Ireland to record a piece to na mark National Community Day. The winner of the Together FM Bally Fermat's 70th birthday competition, he's published in the Blue Lit magazine, Mad Swirled Echo, and was shortlisted for the Cantorque Arts Festival Flash Fiction in 2019. Away you go, Frank. Thank you. First of all, to Bronum, Dalgega, uh, Bjog, Gums, and Nilane, any pieces on the paper written. So I have one piece which is about the, the you know losing the Irish language, but it's uh, it's a bit ashamed of itself at the moment. It won't come out and to play in public. That's at all, fine. So. Don't worry. So we're all at the same game. Grand, grand. Wait, the time is about, about five minutes. Is it? Just five, six. Five, six minutes. Yeah, grand. Thank you. Okay. So this is the, called Do Not Self-Isolate uh, Your House or Your Mind. This is from, this was included in the Mad Swirl Anthology for uh, print edition for 2020. From cave to shack to shanty, luscious forest canopy, humble abode, tenement slum, Brazilian hillside favelas. 60s high-rise urban sprawl, 90s noughties boom and bust from all of this, our shelters from the storm evolve. Hearth once open invites only isolation in for tea, where gadgets talk to satellites that talk to family and strangers alike. A world of breathless talkers, texters, connected, whatever, deaf to each other. We have retreated inside, tongues tied by stigma, cut adrift on a commode of festering demons, eyes blind to the interconnectedness of a toilet pot, that hub of revelation where popes and poets, politicians and paupers and the rest of the worst and the best of us unload the burden of stature or status, succumb to the true nature of things and come to understand the great leveler of a toilet lid in the upright position. Thank you. Um, and that puts so much in context. And, you know, I, I love the, the earthiness, we call it, of it, and, and the consciousness of, uh, you know, the good and the bad of all the electronic communication, which uh, dinosaurs like me are <laughs> beginning to, to get used to. Thank you, Paddy. All right. Um, Polly Richard Munley, like me, had the, the good sense to move to Kerry, and she now lives in Dingle. She's a co-host co and MC for Inspired UK uh, Lit uh, Poetry Nights. She continues to run groups like the Bulls Arse Writers remotely. And I would imagine that if you're going to do something with a Bulls Arse, it's best to do it remotely. But she has been published both nationally and internationally, and her collection, Winter's Breath, is available on Amazon. Falterot Polly. Um, since I've moved down to Dingle, though, I've started to weave both Irish and English into my poetry, just listening to the language being spoken, particularly when I'm at work. And I'm kind of fascinated by it, but also saddened to how much I don't understand. So this piece was born from an inspirational night held at Wordly Worders from uh, Maya Angelou, when we took a whole evening in celebrating her work. Um, it's entitled... Uh, these hands. So I'm just going to give you the line of Irish that's weaved into this and then the English translation. It's very simple. So you're going to hear Le Degalav, Lava, August Gran, which literally translates to two hands, hands and sun. These hands. These hands, October sun weave. Le Degalav, Lava, August Gran. 
Hands that held the imagination game became bare, ran the ten rounds flaying bat, held the manes of rocking chair humming Black Beauty's song, felt the breeze in the good room, the Sunday room, but to the hills they needed, imagining first feels of velvet muzzles, rhythmic strided beats, Ledagala, Lava August Gran, embrace the unwanted. Tickled sleeping paws, wrapped the blisters, held the pumping archery. These hands plucked the summer's hay, synchronized rise and fall of velvet rumps, felt muffled whinnies, nuzzles, hot breath, the fibrous dung, drove the nails, turned the sod, bled rain, leather gala, lava August gran. Buried in contracting vulva, each pulsating pulse its own opera. Felt life's first breath, pulled the soft virginal hooves to sward, milked the unmilked to flow, latched the dummy suckle and spring sun, cradled their last breath. These hands held the lover, the moon as sea swells, stilled for the quickening, felt gestating feet stretching skin, somersaulting moments of womb cocoon. Knitted each stitch patterned yellow, waiting for filling and swaddle. Still trace silken marks etched in skin, each one their own story, destination with destiny, unquantifiable, ripped, clawed, grappled, tangled sheets bearing primal pants, pushing life, tearing layers, years, lineage, leaving girl behind, swimming with afterfluid and that first hand curl grasp neatly nestling around leather gall love, lava August gran. These hands carry the fog, waded weathered storms decades long, sieved the sand, skin stones, held the tight rope, almost yanked that noose, felt the earth breathe, balanced a single drop, heard Ramos hush with rabbit twitch, felt the loss, panic flutters rip it still, Cup the red flow forever seeped, undammable. Caught dimming life still steaming as it drained before the drain. Her, perfectly formed, tasting metallic, broke, morphed to wallflower, stitched, mute, leather gall of, lava August gran. These hands held the pain, found the pen, the voice, and bore. Wrote their music, fucked the reaper twice while laughing, not this time. Always looked on the bright side of seeing, felt sunrises over white moon whisper, weaved the tapestry. Kept threading tidal fusions, refused stagnant, refused starless ebony and corners of cackle. Scooped sustenance from spewing sod, planted seeds of clarity, each new root already invigorated decorating the underlayers. These hands, sun weave, leather gala, lava, August gran. Shine, Gurmila. Gurmila Mahagud Sapali. I have felt uh, living as I do in the Evra Peninsula, a little bit to the south for a long time. I've been jealous of the Dingle Peninsula because there are more poets per square mile or per acre or whatever in the Dingle Peninsula than there are any, I think, anywhere else in their isle, in the island, and I'm glad to see that with lines like you know, felt the earth breathe, and these hands held the pain that that, uh, although it makes me more jealous that that ratio of poets has even got denser now. So, Kurimila Mahagud Polly. Kurimila. Okay, uh, Dermot Fitzgerald has had two collections of haiku published, Thames Way in 2015, A Thousand Par Sparks in 2018, both by Alba Publishing. A collection of poetry called The Singing Hollow is forthcoming also by Alba Publishing. And you can get more information on www.dwriter.com, that's D-double-E, but, uh, Falter uh, Dermot Fitzgerald. Thank you, and thanks for organizing uh, this event. So I'm just going to read a poem and then some haiku, and I will try a translation. 
of some of the poems from English to Irish. So I have to say, it's been an attempted translation, not a, a polished uh, thing. So this is called A Different Door, and it's uh, dedicated to my grandfather. <clears throat> the shed smelled of paint and dust as I pushed open the old cracking door. My granddad stooped over the table, absorbed in his work. I knew to stay silent, entranced by his moving arms and jerking legs. I was in awe of the strange things he kept, tools whose purposes I could not guess. His knobbly hands with reddened thumbs could fashion the leg of a chair from a plank of wood, repair fishing tackle, or mend the bow of a broken boat. He sang songs in a worn out tune. The shed door is new. Oil skins are gone, coils rust, the fishing tackle has not been moved for years and the place is spotless. Light shimmers into all the corners as shadows are banished and the walls are cold. No breath heats the window pane, the place empty of his touch and craft. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so I'll just read, uh, these are haiku that were published in my second collection of Thousand Sparks and then I've done my own very rough translation um, with them there. So um, I read them twice because haiku was so short. Mm -hmm. Reflecting, the sun shattered into a thousand sparks. Reflecting, the sun shattered into a thousand sparks. A, and I'm not quite sure how to say this word, but a magna and green crota emile spreki. Eg machna, an green krota i milia spreki. Grandad's lantern, snowflakes fall into the light. Grandad's lantern, snowflakes fall into the light. Lander ma shanaher, titum plude na snatta in sin solus. Lander ma rashanaher, titum plude na snatta in sin solus. Crows flying under the sky, the stars. Banna eg etelt, fin an spear, narelta. And fair play to you for your translations and for the very moving pictures indeed of your grandfather that the snowflakes falling into the light is a, a beautiful image, you know, as a doting grandfather myself i'd love to be remembered with something like that so and uh, i appreciate and i'm sure lots of us do uh, the effort you made to translate them because uh, our two languages need to talk to each other more right uh, Anne MacDonald is a spoken word poet, dramatist and creative writing teacher whose work is centred on the challenges we face in a society that is changing rapidly around us, how we respond to those changes. She has performed in theatres in Ireland and London as part of the Women of Wit Ensemble and is a regular reader on open mic nights. She's a great believer in the power of poetry to heal, communicate, collaborate and connect. Her debut collection, Crow's Books, is out now with Shawak Press. And of course, Shawak translates as Hawk Press, so Crow's Books and Hawk Press, I like. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I watched the previous uh, um, Taken the Mic on YouTube, in which Anne wrote about a particular position to do with chickens, and I was laughing for a long time afterwards, but laughing about... Uh, fairly serious subject as well so i'm looking forward to hearing um Walter Oath. thank you so much paddy and um i'm glad i wasn't going to do that one tonight but i i'm hopefully going to give you something else to smile about and because i have the great good fortune to be facilitating a course with the irish writers center called the joy of writing i thought i would do something tonight that was cheerful and um, we'll have weekends to betty and everybody for organizing tonight. These are fabulous events. I love them. And uh, my Irish is quite limited, um, unfortunately. But one of the things I learned to say, and it was indoctrinated into, I think, every child in Ireland was, and we'll cut a good old on letters. 
So the poem I'm going to do tonight is a poem that is um, dedicated to every woman who's ever had to use the jacks in a pub. And hopefully for the gentlemen among us, it might be a little bit of elucidation with some of the things we struggle with. And it's simply called Jacks. You know the feeling when you want to go and he's enwrapped in stretching conversation and you wait for hours for pause or punctuation. And when it arrives, you say politely, if somewhat sharply, look at here, I have to go to the Jacks. Hoping something will hold it in to define the loo. You get there fit to burst and find a burst in red face, cross leg cue. And so we females exercise our amazing ability not to burst. By various positions of the legs, crossed, knotted, shifting the weight from one to the other and your bladder feels like a Frisian's other when the milking machine breaks down or there's a power cut. I tell you one thing, lads, it's tough. In a brilliant attempt at mind over matter, you join in gossip's delirious chatter of fellow sufferers until at last the toilet's empty. Rush in, bang the door, nix down, and then you notice there's no lock. Okay, so you hold the door with one hand stretched three inches longer than its normal length and squat. Never, ever sit on the bowl. Because your jeans were tight and your position is unnaturally elongated on account of the door, your end of flex, but you can't stop. Four pints and two gins, the force of which is producing enough electricity to do a seven pound wash on a short spin. And then you begin the hapless search under the bowl and on the floor. And this is very difficult when you're squatting with one hand still holding the door and your heart sinks because you realize there's not a square, not a scrap, not even a fucking cardboard holder. And so you almost dislocate your shoulder when you yank your jeans up and your knickers roll into a rope around the top of your legs like they did when you went swimming and you didn't dry yourself enough. I told you, lads, it's really tough. The electric shock of a wet waistband means the shirt you so meticulously tucked in when you were dressing will hopefully hang outside and be long enough to prevent people guessing if you've wet yourself. Now, some of us have put off performance to make a stand on this issue and march defiantly to the bar and ask for some toilet tissue. Certainly, ma'am, the barman says, would you be wanting that with ice and lemon? And him and his cronies pissed themselves laughing, if you pardon the pun, and he hands you a cater and bale of Andrex. Huh? But you take the rolls and you cross the room, trying to look nonchalantly cool, feeling like an Egypt till you reach it, ladies' loo, complete with you, then it's up you. And then you're in, bang the door, nix down, arm out, paper ready, but you can't go. Nothing. Not a drop, not a trickle, then a lone, pathetic dribble and cold sweat after all that. And this happened to me, and I heard a woman next door grumble and fumble and feel on the floor. Do you want toilet paper? I shouted, my voice getting higher. Paper, she said, I need a fucking hairdryer. Now, I know the paper's made from trees and people are genuinely worried about the slaughter of the tropics, which is affecting the ozone and shagging up the weather. But if this happens to you, girls, I would humbly suggest you use half a roll for spite and badness, put a wad inside your pocket in case you get cut short on the way home. And you might as well lash back the pints and drown in the gin, because with the jacks in a pub, a woman can't win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, what do I say? All I can say is that it flows. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no sign of writer's block. Uh, I, I did, I was yesterday in Derry Nan House and the toilets were unisex. And I've discovered what a disadvantage that is for males because we now have to queue where we never did before. But anyway, thank you for that uh, enlightening piece. Um, Seamus O'Connor, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to sing tonight. I saw him on uh, the other uh, <laughs> taking the mic that I looked like, and his singing was as enjoyable as the poetry. Seamus O'Connor taught English at second level for most of his career, also worked in education and guidance at third level now devotes, devotes more time to writing and art. So kind of a mirror on myself. I used to teach English at second level too. His child, writing influenced by recollections of childhood years in the Midland, inspired by nature. And indeed, I can vouch for this by the interaction 
between music and poetry. So away at the Hamish Taff Ah, Karamagot. Um actually it's the same it's the same uh, poem I'm doing except this time I'm not singing and uh, I've made a few changes in it so here go, here goes um the, the poem was inspired by Beatles song titles and the title I have given it this time is 50 years of growing Quega and egg Foss. Mersey side was swinging while we were flinging hay into barns, summers by Shannon side, Beatles singing on the radio on black and white TV during our growing years in County Offaly, livening up many a dreary day. We did Beatlemania during work and play. We clapped to the beat, we knocked on wood, we rattled pails. Singers on bus scullia belted a yellow submarine. Shy boys at the disco thought, I want to hold your hand. Coy girls in the choir sweetly sang, Hey Jude. In times of resignation, we sang, Let it be. Times of desperation, help, I need somebody. Times of expectation, we sang, Here comes the sun. Down Wexford Way they vocalised, strawberry fields forever. Older cousins harmonised, come together, our day tripper. Our popular priest sermonised, all you need is love. Vibes of celebration, twist and shout. Vows of cooperation, we can work it out. Views of separation, she's leaving home. Our elders couldn't understand our bond with Sergeant Pepper's Heart Club Band. The foursome who sang with attitude and cheek of their need for love eight days a week. Parents were perplexed at our revolution from children to teens in a musical revolution. Tempers flared up as we listened to the band. Lines were drawn in the sand. De Precation versus admiration, condemnation versus adulation, Beatle phobia versus Beatle mania. We faced it all down, we just didn't care. Nobody could stop us from growing our hair. They shook their heads, they called us galoots. We did a hippie hippie shake in our Beatle boots. The Merseyside spinners wove their web of song. Fifty years later, I still sing along. The fabulous four still please, please me as I meander the long and winding road across the universe. Shine, Gorvila Mahagwev Galer. Gorvila Hamish. I am. You know, I, I miss the singing, but I suppose on the other hand, uh, I, I can, the craft that lies behind that poem uh, became clearer maybe uh, this evening to me. It's very impressive, the level of craft, and I'm sure you must have been a very good teacher for uh, pointing out to, to students what makes poetry work, because you certainly know. Gurid Mila Mahagat. Thank, thank you very much, Paddy. Uh, and thanks, Bernie, as well. I, I see Bernie here because it was uh, with Bernie's class I started uh, doing this. And um, so credit to her as well. <laughs> great to hear you, Seamus. Great to yeah. hear you. Good to, good to see you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And Bernie is, is now going to read. Uh, when I looked through the um, taking the mic on YouTube, uh, Bernie scared the wits out of me because she did it, the emceeing, so easily and so entertainingly and so full of attention that I said, Mother of Jesus, I'll never be able to emulate that. Yeah, so I, but I also... I'm scared, I am. <laughs> I'm scared. Good, good. Uh, I look forward to the reading because I enjoyed her reading on the thing. 
uh, that I looked at before. She broadcasts about uh, literature and history on Near FM. Poems appeared in Poetry Ireland Review, Cronogue, Irish Times, New Irish Writing, The Blue Nib, The Galway Review, Southward, among others. She's had two shows accepted for Smock Alley, uh, Seen and Heard Festival, Unrhymed Dublin, and The Seven Ages, Like It or Not. Her first poetry collection, Frankly Baby, was published by Lapwing, Lapwing Press in 2018. Came second in Jonathan Swift Award, shortlisted for the Anthony Cronin International Poetry Award, recipient of two grants from the BAI, one for a series on coming of age novel. So, Karim Falteroth, Agus Awelat Bernie. Karim Falteroth, thanks very much. Uh, I've two here coming in under six minutes. The first one is called Witness. Witness. Why did the wood man spare thee? Big old tree. Your girt confirms your antiquity. You stand askance and glance awry at the morning sky and the day sky and the night sky and wonder why you were left behind. Was it accidental? For two centuries, you've calmly watched the comings and goings of milkmaids and parlour maids, footmen and coachmen, whistling chimney sweeps and singing lamplighters, gnarled and hoary gardeners, aproned delivery boys on bicycles, prim faced bonneted nannies pushing rosy fat babies in perambulators, giddy young women on the arms of jaunty soldiers. You loved to watch the girls in patched white pinafores and black boots. The boys in worn knee breeches and cloth caps running to school. You looked on pityingly at, door, at doorstep scrubbers and doorknob polishers, fresh from rural townlands, doomed to serve the bourgeoisie. With sorrow at telegram boys delivering died or missing in action. With mischievous amusement at glimmer men or self-important clergymen. With concern at the hurried, hurried doctor with the big brown leather bag. With passing interests at the covered carriages of the cloaked and veiled ascendancy. Furtive lovers embraced beneath your canopy. Shrieking children swung among your branches. Birds nested in your labyrinthine boughs. Lumbering livestock nuzzled into your rough bark. Their soporific lowing your lullaby for two centuries. Time moves faster now, but your lockstep with succeeding generations is flawless. And spring never fails to weave a motley hem of hyacinth and crocus around your base. Expanding in harmony with your unbroken silent witness, your branches distend with the weight of history. Your cumulative photosynthesis fuels the life cycle of a Dublin suburb. Big old tree, I know you will outlive me and witness things I'll never see. Second one is called Babel Bus or Dublin bus before the pandemic. My desire to speak in the tongues of the ones on the bus is insatiable. I drown in the river run of exotic words rolling over me. Waves of foreign youth flood the top deck with mellifluous romance, goth-like Germanic, step-strong Slavic. 
they enunciate Middle Eastern dialects like beautiful laughing prayers, sing Asian vernaculars like ancient stringed instruments. Indian subcontinental words dance and whirl. African languages deliver the cast iron certainty of rock solid stories down the ages. The Dublin bus sails into town. My skipper, a solemn pole. I name this ship Finnegan's Wake. Mine and Olivia Plurabel will learn some novel lingo. I am a fool for Farsi, a sop for Swahili. And the wheels go round to the sound of the babble of the new, new, new cosmopolitan rabble who dabble and gabble in each other's tongues, who patter in a smattering of lingua franca to understand each other. I am jamming to the intercontinental lexiconic mashup on the Babel book. Purv Mahagutsa. Purv Okay, uh, diff different century, different geography, but it reminds me of Bruegel paintings. Um, you know, like what they used to say about the news of the world, all human life is there. Thank you. Lo lovely work. Thank you. Um, I see, Betty, uh, uh, an interval. We have an interval now, is that right, for 10 minutes or so? Will we bother, Paddy, will we plow on? Um, I was got, usually we'd have um, maybe five or 10 minutes of an interval, but it's not going to be as long tonight. So I think if everyone is in agreement, we'll keep going. That's fine, yeah. OK. And, um, oh, it's me. Right. OK. <sighs> I'm going to read uh, one poem, again, uh, a poem originally written in Irish, but I'll read it with a, a translation. And it's a poem because it's, a, it's about translation and it's about um, translating your mind into different cultures and all. Uh, sorry, I, I'll tell you what specifically what it's about it i had spent a long time uh, thinking about and making stabs at translating a poem called by rilke uh, my german isn't great but with with translation and some advice called uh, buddha in their glory or buddha in glory and i was trying to translate it into irish and i gave up for a few years and then i was in Thailand and somewhere in Northern Thailand went into a Buddhist temple and suddenly I decided I would uh, translate the poem. So I, I picked it to read because it's about, as I say, geographical translation, cultural translation and language translation, you know, from German translating a poem into Irish, writing that I couldn't do it and then writing about doing it and then write, translating my own poem into English, uh, all quite complicated about a fairly unified subject. So, Shahian and Gaelge Lehime at the Sach, a Gastru Buddha in their glory. Naig Mahala, Vishay Kata Wimagam, and Smuinov Ganashtroin and Don Shinla Rilke, Kegoreshe Filter. Agus a ilte trim agene, Maraver brathoga urnaha, er crown nerfa. Furus ro chafirid, ne clearcha o the norevan dawn, Agus an tashtrochan a tashtel. An gramadach de vriacht, Agus nosferacht an tarshig, sitter, mar hunstek, er mechadestach. Ach nor a vinis mo vroga ear her a diem, riv goal her tarshach temple pra sing, 
is nor a heels cross cossach eg analu chusha clagini a bola a lohena on shahs and shoot Dahnius Buddha Rilke os machor in order Kaum vrat ne gishel ga kahremach er faluin os a hum Ilinir on eva Higgis gewerd fui gunyan fui tanga diem Translating Buddha in their glory Against my will I had put to one side the notion of translating that poem by Rilke. Despite its winding itself around my mind, like prayer flags around a sacred tree. They were too alien to me, those territories where poem and translation were travelling. The grammar ambiguous and the threshold customs squatting like portal guards against my entering. entering. But when I took off my occidental shoes, before crossing the threshold of Wat Pra Singh, and when I sat cross-legged, inhaling incense, temple bells tinkling somewhere in the breeze, I recognised Rilke's Buddha high up before me, a nine-tiered canopy triumphantly floating above his head. In that resplendent image gleamed the possibility of the gift of tongues. So we'll go on and listen to the uh, very considerable, more of the considerable gifts of tongues we've heard tonight. Uh, next up is Barra. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. Barra Fitzpatrick. Uh, all it tells me here is 66 year old Dubliner contributing to the Living Word radio program on RT1. So Tommy Asuila the Khid file to road Barra. Uh, thanks very much Paddy Garmagat. <coughs> Uh, this is, uh, there's no Irish in this, I'm sorry. Um, it starts as a prose piece and ends um, uh, with a bit of poetry. The Red Teapot. <clears throat> a painter was once looking for a canvas to paint on. His friend said, here, take this one and use the back of it. So he did. And as they were both poor and canvases were in short supply. Years pass and his painting sells for thousands of pounds. But when the canvas is turned around and another painting is discovered on the back, there is huge excitement. Why? Because it's a Francis Bacon, the famous Dublin painter, and it sells for millions. The city is our canvas and we write and paint on it all our lives. Then it gets painted over by the next generation. Churches become offices. Now offices are becoming something else. Maybe apartments. Distilleries close and distilleries open. Cafes have sprouted like dandelions in the last decade. And now we have horse box cafes and container cafes. And Ambo Sambo in the Ivy Market on Francis Street. A city with a thousand year history will have layers and Viking Dublin peeps through the surface between Christchurch and the Liffey. My city is time's sediment. My schools, the places where I worked, places where I met friends, they're my markers. And they have all changed, but so have I. And as I walk the city, I feel them as touch points. They talk to me. Was I really born in Hatch Street? Or is that just a joke they told me? There was a particular cold winter's day when we threw snowballs at the opposition across the street. The teachers lined us up afterwards and we got the leather on frozen fingers for our trouble. Was it the leather or was it a wooden ruler? Anyway, it hurt like hell. Mulligan's pub, where I drank as a student, 
the stag's head, likewise, how many others, toners, the baggage in, Searsons, O'Donoghue's. In those days, we navigated the streets by the names of pubs. And the mercantile on Dame Street, now a pub, but back then it was the head office of the Mercantile Credit Corporation. And we installed office partitions there, my brother and I. And after work, we used to go to a greasy spoon on Liffey Street, where we would order egg and chips. And the nearby church bar on Mary Street, where I saw a Greek Orthodox service before the building was deconsecrated and before it turned into a trendy bar where you might have a drink beside a tombstone beneath a plaster angel. Close to that is the fruit and vegetable market on Mary's Lane, only recently closed. I used to go there really early. It opened at 5 a.m. My wife and I would have a sausage sandwich in a cafe called Paddy's Place. The places that are gone like the country shop on Stevens Green with its red teapots and heavy tables and the Biancani Grill in the Hibernian Hotel and the Dandelion Market, of course, where you two started as buskers. There was a flat in Georgian Dublin right up on top under the roof where I lived as a single man, so far above the street that you felt like Sisyphus carrying a bag of groceries up all those flights of stairs and a bag of rubbish all the way down again. And weaving through it all, the cigarette smoke that uh, almost eludes me brings my mother back so strongly that I sometimes follow smokers down a side street until they toss the cigarette butt. My kids are overseas. My friend Michal is gone. My friend Ben is gone. Mum and dad are gone. And now my sister Jill is gone. Though I think of her every time I make tea in the little red teapot she gave me. Never knew a pot to keep the tea so warm. I could cry out with loneliness some days. My siblings are all decamped to Cork. I'm also aware of my age group retiring. They are retreating to their tree houses in the upper canopy of the forest, bolt holes and nest eggs. So it is rare to bump into any of them. I resume my beat each week. Each week I resurrect, each week a new creation. More a crafted thing of scraps and patches. As I age, I take on, I put on weight, or maybe as I age, I take on lightness and reduce my footprint. I take to the air, I skip like a stone. The home city speaks to me, speaks through me with smells and half-recognized faces, with beer barrel drops on wet footpaths, trucks offloading product on the street, where sudden dungeons yawn and moldy smells escape. So something here is coming through, rubbed smooth, worn smooth, eroded, the riverbed through the river, the bones through the flesh, a tune in your head, Love's old sweet song, my mother's cigarette ash about to drop at dusk in the kitchen in Sandy Cove. But I am outside looking in, wondering why the lights are already on in the house when there is still so much light out here. Thank you so much for that. That's an, an extraordinary piece of work, uh, you know, there's so many things you could quote, but the city is time sediment and, you know, crafted things of scraps and patches, so many bits and pieces and extraordinary well crafted. And that final image of the cigarette ash. Thank you. Gurumil uh, Mahagat. And just the country shop on Stevens Green. When I got married in 1970, we didn't have a wedding reception of the normal thing. But we did have a boozeless party in the country shop in Stevens Green. So give a reminder of that. And red teapots and all that. So we're a meal market. And Ched Lehor Ella Begagwing, Derter and Sog, Younger Phila Rahangach E. Joanne McCarthy, 
She's published and anthologized in Core, Splunk, Hold Open the Door, the Ireland, Ireland Chair of Poetry Anthology, The Stinging Fly, The Honest Ulsterman, and more. And she is co-founder and co-editor of the Wax Lemon. So Ta Falterot Joanne McCarthy. Gurmaga Patty, as Gurmaga Gair, that's a very aspen. So, um, so it's more her made the tour uh, book of Tom Fuisha Shot, so Tom Love Lawn. Aka, so um, yeah, she's going man called Fuhu. How can she just talk to the Iliots, uh, Gumsta? So on Cage Can Galeg may know, um, Chuck Sloan, Agus Toshi Shaw, Falsha, and hold open the door. Um, so uh, actually, we are scrief we on Clilla Kuig of Imarn, so Scrius we Nulani Gonal, I guess, I suppose, um, Sprag uh, a Sayher on on Dawn Shop, where um, it's even on their screen, she fween a Boshi fame, a Boshi fame. So uh, Tusna Millish and Cam Galen, I guess, and son, Lady May and Tasha Fon, Chalk Sloan. Baron Krigal, Ivica, Ivica. A skirt and a mock and lad as oiga, a valley co ordeha, knock fader la marodo, for you steggy on dinosaur, a gyo no good joes, a shomer break on. No one tli, knock mock tira ainer a he and galach, go il jafurica, a ke or fod in a rail tree, call carica in a rail fuinta, call sheshurica in a dre gita. Conisca in show do, fin chucks lob and pater, on Kalinuk shin, er varig winter steggy illig. Conisca dog and she to mock Sloan as a mleskavam. La fiak la bioga gera a ragrim, August, Ryan me log Mexico, top pals at Halavan, Hane has bought it. Um, the translation safe landing. Crocodiles lay eggs, eggs. The youngest lad cries, his eyebrows raised so high, I can't say a word about the origin of Steggy, the dinosaur who groans all day long in the toy room. Nor can I tell the moon is no lone wolf, she has kin all over the galaxy, constellation cousins and meteorite sisters. Because how could I speak about the Chicxulub and Pactor, that black sheep who murdered Steggy's kind? How do they come out of the eggs, ma'am? with sharp little teeth, I answer, and someday we'll go to Mexico. There's a hole in the ground waiting for you. Okay, come on, guys. I guess, um, like me, can't, come on, guys. So, can't, um, can we call some excuse blank ish, ish, but just hug me and cry, you know, the list of you, all of my gunner skull, you know, um, Tom, Tom, two, Tom, she, you know, and list the shin as hooks and crushing. I was just cook my lash. So I was very shish with that, um, that, um, you know, and Jingla all, and I was, you know, just the Megiri, she's cut of your shoot again. So on Teleton now, Togma, Quisat Ma, Maglor. Tom make bock all her own banani. Well, vine, must ready grab banana focus, take. Tom, two, a glen and chlor, Pilates or Zoom, August Yoga, Exmuna Free Zumba. Toshi a gagri tron a guest, bun dun clown in ox, bun her in a hook to thee, a reached. Toshe, marva grand free rahi, ro conquer door in the cuss on pibli. Tom easy fake under Netflix, sky, a noob, and I'm sure, or te. Ton shivik shul in a mean cam and came at a team by gachlo. Toshe grow, gamek and love and ukture grin, throw. Just in for an a gyar. Nilena shook on a gum to bronum, I don't have any translation for that, sorry. And um, I'll finish with um, this is called Fionsko and Toshe Nirish Kor in the Mesa. Actually, no, Toshe Nirish Kor in the Bialta, Massim Gul Nirish Kor me and Beth Tagahamak. But um, Fionsko, this is um, about um, one of my children loves Kung Fu Panda. Why wouldn't she? <laughs> and um, he um, they renamed the tree up the road, the, the I can't think of the English for it. Anyway, they called it the Kung Fu Panda tree. Um, you feel a little smoother and fuck up, barely on time, barely turn ground anyway. Um, so, uh, they called it the Kung Fu Panda Tree because in Kung Fu Panda, these 
pink petals float up into the air and they kind of go off into this magical world. So I was looking at my child, looking at the tree and calling it the Kung Fu Panda tree and playing with the petals and thinking about the power of his imagination to go wherever he wanted to with the petals. Um, so Fionsko and Than Than. Fionsko. Ta crown shalini shapon akshis and boher uun a anamnaha egnagasur on Kung Fu Panda tree. Leling Kung Fu Panda tree, Emin Po quick count in an aris, a gorhainer lakai, Um Hoy de Loga bon darga foha in eag, Shasan a ho lakra of the poundy a gurkle, a sheena mach, she quigga, less than she illig boon po. Fake and mauve vox suser and ground more vlachter calm hulach, she is less good in fair, the de Loga bon darga snee through the lot vera. Can she bus locks in air? Titten she tinkle a eig. Skarten and gore uig. As them gore fain. Blahin she on she. That's it. Grandma Hagaf. Mila Maggot. Anuba. If if you be, ever become rich and famous as a writer, you'll have to divide your royalties uh, among your children so you're only you get quarter of them. They say never, never to put children on stage, but they certainly work in the poetry. Okay, uh, it was great to be listening to people. It's great. Um, go ahead um, and fill a note. Well, mm. and fill it turn bold. Let them know near cool my life. Did you know that? Um, Kurt. Okay, I'm done. So, um, I'd like to because I'm going to read this in Irish only. I'd like to explain it a little bit. Um. I thought it was very interesting when Joanne was talking about the pandemic and that I, I think we all feel that it's very hard to say anything about the pandemic and um, that we don't have enough distance yet um, and that it's a mistake to try and write about it too soon but yet we want to and we can't help ourselves I think. Um, so this poem that I'm working on at the moment and it's it's going to be long, I think, but um, it's about, I suppose it's about privilege. And if, if you're an Irish speaker, and if you're, um, I suppose if you're an Irish person at all, um, you tend to be up for the underdog. So what I wanted to do was to set myself a challenge and to say, well, can you defend somebody who is very privileged. Um, fortunately, God touch wood and, you know, long may it continue so far. I haven't suffered too badly. Um, and as Paddy was saying, I, I work from home, which is a great job. We could work from home. Um, so, so far things have been quite easy. But at the same time, I want to see if if you can make the case for anyone feeling lonely and anxious, and even a privileged person and even someone who has it easy. So that's, that's what I was thinking of when I started the poem. I had that expression, which is, you mustn't grumble. I had that very much in my head, but then I went on and I, I complained for about, <laughs> for about 12 pages. <laughs> I'm not going to read all 12 pages, but I think I'll probably read the first four. Um, and I will just read it in Irish. So, and also that it isn't finished yet. It's still a work in progress, but you seem like very nice people. So <laughs> I'm going to just try it out in you. Uh, Rebecca Bowen, Agasan Togar. Nor Rogan Drochan, Noah Erin. 
the rich Rebecca Bowen, the Reverend Lower Lash, Cholum Le Cree, the Vuisha, Gumagale and Ocht, non rare, on tool, a glute, and a gorsen. Snellifi suburbs, Hain, the Richie Grevan Tarum, no offer, Aram Bader, a frappa la Hain, the law. The Rabashri Brescia, Cahabna's bowl, a gore close, and the hoggy. The Sponach Gach Sheen, we hawn, Garlehi. But Ur, Agus Nira Bur, Horge E. Marshan Hain, he may Narabisha, Rebecca Bowen, and Caraboon. Bavogum. Rebecca Bone, a fulling snapasha, ignacite troch the ombra, Shkian Hosha, Agus Bujel Sin Fandel, Igishon Biog, a roher. No Gurhana gathering, Diffin Moore, Erpiogan Farhina, but Anna of Sturmher, Shiel Falconish. Ni abraher stri shoga jasen or chorhi on frasa, a fech she fasta, am gaven. Achan ku se shu the shola. Fido ar he overlipina, nach yarna biogas fu de chloch fila, no de hyam shriva. Fair heilig a hig gamin on lana fe kerna vehicle. Gamin on shandan a mebuich. An cúr mór gan spá, is an tál a vá i fíche. Gamín an fair le lúme, agus na hébí le trimú. Gamín go dhéven hé, gach jarrú éinlíg, eagr. Har íhe, jimig spár spár na hífige, spár da aim spártagus, éla, jyssuí charlí, agus an gáshga gáshra. Gan fila urhu. Gur higshi in a cree a shte an rug barun in yeta. Garawahas an aris fuhi. Nara chine, chief haini. Ni itzen, ach misha, a jeka chas. Bi fuhi kaun kringa a chanal in yeta. Ke lesh. Leshen beish der lav rubble, bi vaun tossi a roher. Lakun nan hark lokra, nar rogach agus nar sailihioch. Ishop a bon na bati. Lesh na kno na kapu. A for baska raha, arm gosan sklagach, ishach lower na kahra. Lena sul hain, na bak sul harig. Ma vina dorsha in a quina, la sira, la dritcha. Ni orach je bohoilat kasa erasoi, kan frapa kan paka, un fokal shin prapa il hanafein in a vak ala, in a vak ala erhi, sanaimshir eraku, agas sanaimshir rompi amach. Je ta kuj for a aulumwen, dorch lehi. Pimi nach ganyuk satala veritev sun jen chahar agas driyadar shan fivu, er vohar natra. Her sclavi lan badra is shach ar chain an chlabi. Fer na mara gan ehe ni horadish an la lo. An daritur ni hurtach si dargora bio. Na ni jarach si fasta fui chara nua an pheel. Agar hanig, garimig, no am ni amu tantor, gar binagat an oiga. Bavin le a haulu nachrif skirg ar an chain. Gurbe an cú a dúis a chéirde a bhóin, a fhasgach aim le fhaim, a chasbánach gach sín fwy hawn. Bína sáni ysachdi le cúr a bhali, agus níra búr chórte í. Gach as na bár brahúnas hén, cúr ach sí na le héna mar bá chór. Ach fwy ach sí ar an lá bár chálú sí a chí. Gareth Gelch, Snaglampe, Hiram, Lesh, Agus Corsina, Snaglahach, Ahorach, Slaba, Laura, Erharam, Orsa, Nakantika, Bich Aku, Bich Anaman Aku, Niji Aram, Erfa, Dahonik, Shian, and Rohr, Yenashana, 
Yenish Anala, Baron Schlachshin, Er Santal of Lehi, Fado, Nurfi Castor of the Lu, a Hashtruaku. No one ex made it, Erin Skurroch, a Vishay. Nachir Skurig, Natuya, Evin, and Palavmore, Smater, a Golmi. Woke, I'm Rip Van Winkle, a story. Gorib Mila Magot Afrik Pisa Anna Hochtoch Gudio Hafi Eshtaklesh Noelev Kupla or Stoilemach Pisa Anna Lider. And I should have said uh, earlier, I, I think I forgot to uh, mention Afrik's uh, titles Goal Sirens Agus uh, Foreign News, which came out from Gallery Press with translations by David Wheatley. Uh, both well worth getting Gurid Mila Mahagat. We have Bob Shakeshaft. Bob has been a long time participant on the Dublin open mic scene. Bob's poems have appeared in several anthologies, broadsheets, uh, literary magazine, new NYL literary magazine, live encounters, etc. His first collection by Revival Press Limerick is now on pre-order and maybe you'd give us a, a title for it, Bob. But anyway, Foyle to Roth, you're very welcome to read your stuff. The title of the collection is Owl Rope and it's actually the title of the poem that I'm going to read tonight. It uh, doesn't need much intro, it's Pretty much self-explanatory, based in Dublin. Owl Drope. Not so long ago in Dublin, city children swung high on green lampposts. No time to care. The day breezes traffic, the Lithian temple, chiseler skipped under and over an old Guinness rope. That some man's coiled frame rang home in quiet light and let fall from shoulders weary on Millenhall Street. Till some child's father measured even lengths by axe swung sky high and splintered fiery sparks that rang to hip hip hooray from young ones and young fellas, Dublin as can be. In rest the axe laid safe each mother's grip Set free a tug of war, cries chapped the skin. Gimme da, gimme da, that's ours, I'll wreath ya. Watch out till we get a proper dangle. Some mother's bawling. Turn the bleeding rope, will you jump and sing? Po, 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 for devil nera. In comes Mary at the door, I go. Over. And under, till a shout jumped in, telling the watchers, your tay is poured. In silent swish, each rope did rest in waning lamplight. Women's idle chatter set men out to drink a pint of black in the hush of twilight. The lippy flowing past another day, let night creep in Granby's lane. Dark shadows, a busty woman, Erna, to feed her child and drunken husband, who swears old promise on his mother's grave to stop the, the habit. He shames each night, suffering his lacuna in this city life. Sunrise urges a new day, bids some priest to pray for men, to leave the early house as chiselers go to school. Each mother waves goodbye. Gurmila, thank you. I guess. Gurmila Mahagat Sabab, my upbringing was out in the, the suburb, North Dublin suburbs in Donny Carney, but I remember the vote, vote, vote for De Valere and the, the skipping. But uh, your poem is. Uh, very evocative that way, but evocative in an unsentimental way, seeing the 
uglier side of things as well. Gurv Mila Mahagat as Shin. Um, do uh, Betty the uh, you mentioned a, another name on your Tierney? I think is she with us? Yeah. No, she's not with us. She's not I'm, with us. No. So uh, Shin Shin, I think. I'm going to just jump in for a second. Sure, of course, yeah. And um, I just wanted to sorry. Um, I just wanted to say, does everyone want to unmute themselves? Um, if you just wanted to have a bit of a chat about the readings or anything like that, usually we don't get a chance to say anything at the end, but we have a little bit of time. If anyone, I don't know, wants to sing a song or anything like that, I just wanted to say, Paddy, with your unique wit and style and uh, brilliant feedback, it, you made it a lovely, intimate evening and it was very um the talent was absolutely incredible so i'd like to say an absolute huge uh thanks to everybody um just wondering emer would you like to say anything uh yes just basically to... oh my if you have a live stream on in another window you might just need to close it oh i probably do uh, maybe it's joanne's kids looking for attention <laughs> Is that any better? Yes. Yeah, I just closed my other, my other laptop. I had YouTube on there. Um, yeah, just to reiterate what, what Betty was saying, um, to congratulate you all and thank you all. That was absolutely brilliant. I loved hearing all of the different readings. Um, and it was such an enjoyable evening. My only regret is that we're not all together in, in, a, in a bar somewhere, uh, you know, <laughs> able, able to have a, a drink now and chat about how it went and to continue into the night. It's a slightly less or it, it's a different experience online um but i'm delighted that we were able to do it regardless and, and hopefully i'll get to see all of you in the irish writer center or in in bantry uh one of these years it's funny um Eimear, actually because uh you know when we do have the uh taking the mics in the irish writer center it's a big huge room you probably know the room where we have uh the readings and funny i actually find the online um, it is, you kind of feel closer. Okay, oh, brilliant. Hear, well, I can hear better. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> but it, I, I can hear better. And it's just, um, it feels more immediate. But the big thing is the aftermath. Yes. There's nowhere to go afterwards. So, yeah. 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 You usually end up in a local pub in parallel square. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think all my favourite pubs were mentioned in the piece. <laughs> yes. that, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was trying to take it. I forgot about that one. <laughs> was it 2019 actually we, were, we had the uh, taking the mic, Afric? And was it? Was 2019 we had that I taking the mic? So. I do. It had to be 2019, yeah. So yeah, we had a few. Um, a few drinks, a few jokera were consumed. <laughs> a very, a very good night. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Paddy, we hope to see you at the Irish Writer Centre at some stage um, when you're back in Dublin again. Is he still there? Is he gone? <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I would be delighted to win. To, to the center, it's and it's a, you know, the writer center for a good number of years now has done some great things. Yeah, it's amazing that it's thirty years old at this stage and um, still going strong. Thirty. Oh my God. Yeah, and I was going to say to you, uh, your writing course sold out today, so uh, congratulations. Is this Paddy's or mine? Hi. I, don't, I don't have one, so oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but Betty, could I just say, I know I've said this last time, and I genuinely do mean it. These are such welcoming events that the Irish Writers' Centre put on. And, you know, Zoom can be intimidating for those of us that never heard of it up until a year ago. And they're such welcoming events. They really are. And it probably is the intimacy that we're all I'm in my kitchen. I don't know where everybody else is. But I was talking to Polly earlier on Facebook and I was saying that I'm a bit worried because I don't really have a couple of focal 
and I'm afraid I won't understand the Irish. And Polly said, and she was right, just listen. That's yeah. all I have to do, just listen. Yeah. And she was absolutely right. You know, it was actually gorgeous, even though I didn't understand some of it, most of it, but there is something magical about just listening. And, you know, you hear the heart of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the mixture of the English and the Irish is, it is there is something really lovely about it. Very much. So, yeah. so I guess that's it, unless anyone else wants to say anything. Um, we're all probably tired after those few hours. Well, it's a lovely right. way. It's a lovely way to connect, isn't it? Because even though we're not all in the pub in Parnell Street, um, but look at where else would we all meet from all corners of the yeah. country yeah. and be able to turn up and hear each other and listen? Yeah, to each other. it's a real privilege, you know. So thanks so yeah. much to everybody that organised it. Thanks very much indeed. Okay, then will we we say good night? Okay. Good night. We'll do the Zoom way. Very much, everybody. Great to see you all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.